This will be a first of a series throughout fall camp where we just preview the various you know position groups for Kansas State. We'll also have a, probably videos where we're on camera discussing some of the practices that we may may or may not see in the next few weeks as we get closer and closer to the regular season where Kansas State will open up in Arlington at AT&T Stadium where we just were a few weeks ago for Big 12 Media Days. They open up in that stadium where they'll play Stanford uh, first game of the year. One of the position groups that will probably be a, a pretty critical talking point is the offensive line. It's clear that they have a lot more depth in that group. Carver Willis is a true freshman that saw a little bit of playing time last year. Gatori Levison started you know, several games last year, and he might uh, be more of a reserve this mm -hmm. season that kind of shows you how much that room has expanded. They added Kingsley Ugu. Maybe he doesn't play for another year, but that's another suitable player that can play on the offensive tackle for them that they added from Hutchinson Community College. Um, obviously, you bring back some of the starters from a year ago because they didn't lose anyone, and that, obviously that includes Noah Johnson, Ben Adler, Josh Revis, um, Christian Duffy got a few starts, Taylor Portier got a few starts, Cooper Beebe got plenty of starts. So it's it's a, a unit that's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty deep, and Connor Riley has done a good job of building that and, and fostering a lot of growth and development within his roster. And it ain't just the right pieces on, on the recruiting trail as well. And another one that I've heard actually start to surge a little bit is Hadley Panzer at center. I don't think he's going to play this season, but maybe down the road he's a potential starter as well. So the offensive line is in great hands. When we're talking about the starting lineup, um, I don't know that it's going to be the same group day one as it is um, the last game of the season. That could be something we see as they get older and mature together yeah. and develop more that we see some different faces um, be ready. And, you know, obviously maybe change things as the year goes on. But day one, I, th I think there's three certainties, probably four. Mm -hmm. I think Cooper BB at left tackle is a certainty to start the season. Noah Johnson at center, I think, is a certainty to start th out the season. And a right tackle, I think Christian Duffy is pretty much, you know, has nailed that spot down as well. So those are the three. Josh Revis probably at left guard as a fourth. Mm -hmm. um, he's probably headed back in the right direction. He had a, he was pretty good two years ago and then maybe took a step back quite a bit, uh, so to speak, last season where I, don't, I think – I don't know that he regressed, but he didn't take as big of a jump forward as folks were anticipating. They were yeah. kind of thinking maybe he has an all-conference type season. That didn't happen. But I think he probably has that left guard spot in his grasp just because he's probably the most talented offensive lineman on this entire roster still, and I don't think that's yeah. really up for debate. So really, the battle is at right guard. Where Does Ben Adler keep that position? Does he keep that starting spot? Or did Taylor Portier's uh, – really, you know, instant success last year in mm -hmm. Ben Adler's absence, does that catapult him forward to a starting position to begin the 2021 season? I think it does. And the main concern with Potier right now is, you know, he was out during the spring, so injury is a concern with him there. And, you know, you, you brought up a question, do you think uh, it'll be the same starting line to start the season to end the season? Usually that can't happen because of injuries. Hopefully a guy like Taylor Portier can stay healthy because that is important. If a, if a group can stay healthy all year, it can be the difference. Um, but I do like Portier in that possession. Ben Adler is the guy they like there. They like his personality. They like his, uh, you know, his ability to play the football, play uh, in that role at guard. He did well when he started there. But I'd be lying if I said Portier didn't, you know, outplay him when he came in um, in his absence when, when Adler dealt with some injuries. So that showed that Podier could possibly be ready to start right away. And if he stays healthy, in my opinion, I think it is the right call to, to try Podier out um, in that spot if he can be that dominant. Because he, he, he has the, the intangibles and the traits that you need to be a solid offensive lineman. Um, not that Ben Adler doesn't, but Podier has him, you know, more, more so like a, a Revis does. And Potier seems to have the, the right mindset as well. And you brought up Revis. If he can really, you know, ha bring that mindset and rein that in this season, you brought up how talented he is. That could make a huge difference um, just from his production. Because, yeah, he didn't have the season people thought he would have. And that's something that could show come next, you know, this coming season. Yeah, and Potier probably does have a higher ceiling of potential than Ben Adler. And maybe that'll be a part of the decision-making process.
at some point. He did miss the spring, and for a young guy, you know, reps are important. Does that hurt his chances to start, you know, the season opener against Stanford? We'll find out. Stanford's probably going to be a pretty heavy group up front, so maybe yeah. uh, maybe experience will be – valued a little bit more than it otherwise would have and maybe that'll sue Ben Adler we don't know if good to my head I'm going to say Taylor Portier just because I do think he exceeded expectations when he was inserted into the lineup um, at the end of the season and we kind of heard some whispers that they probably felt like eh, maybe we should have done that sooner so I, I can totally understand that line of thinking and, and hearing those whispers it kind of makes you think perhaps they want to keep moving forward with Portier keep pushing him and keeping him in that story lineup might be the best thing for him. It's probably going to be a pretty heated battle between the two for that right guard spot um, throughout fall camp. I think when we're talking about also um, the offensive line, the starting group perhaps not being the same game one as it is game 12, so to speak, when they play Texas in the finale in Austin. I think part of that too is the angle – of Carver Willis. Yeah. He was a true freshman that played a little bit last year, which is pretty rare as at left tackle. Now it was out of necessity because there was, you know, all the COVID stuff and some, some of the guys being banged up as well, but he was actually performed admirably when he went in. Now he didn't have the bulk to really hold up for an, you know, any sizable portion of the season. Now perhaps he does now he's, you know, he's a lot thicker now. He's a lot more physically, you know, uh, developed at this point mm -hmm. maybe perhaps he, he to be honest he's probably on the track where he might need to lean up like the same way that Katori Leviston did mm -hmm. because he is getting you know, like really thick but if he continues the trajectory that he showed last year then perhaps at some point this season he's ready to take that left tackle starting spot and that would be the best thing for Kansas yeah. State if they if they have someone on their roster that is able to say, I'm the best left tackle now, and Cooper BB can slide and play his best position, which is on the interior of the offensive line. Yeah. They haven't had that since Chris Kleiman and company took over. Is Carver Willis the answer? Um, we'll probably find out at some point this year. If they throw him in there for a game start and begin to start him, that probably gives us our answer. Yeah. I don't know that we have that answer yet, which is probably why Cooper BB is still left tackle exactly. day one. And I think there's a, but I think there's a better chance, and it's kind of why you just stated, you know, Willis is that next option. I think there's a better chance Willis takes role of that position based on you know starting uh, or finding roles uh, as a true freshman on the tackles position. You know, you don't see that often in that spot. So if Carver Willis can can turn that into being that guy and and getting getting in early into the season and allow Cooper Beebe to slide in and that becomes a, a cohesive group that is something that could be dominant and very good for k-state like you said but people might ask like then why did you uh, why'd they go and get a kingsley oogle i mean that's you know and, and why wouldn't he be ready to go right away you can always you can't have enough left tackles you know in or ta right tackles in your dis at your disposal you know he's not going to be ready right away um, you don't want to ever have to put him out there. We saw how injuries got the best of him this year. I don't think that would be the case this year just because there's more depth in general. But you you really, I mean, that was just to ensure, you know, another tackle to have for the future. I think it gives Carver Willis a little bit more competition mm -hmm. um, a year from now to because, you, you know, iron sharp, sharpens iron and you want your guys to, to continue to be pushed. Uh, you, you know, we're going to have a story coming out soon, uh, the hoop scoop, another story for you, where you said that's kind of happening right now. Like mm -hmm. Nigel Pack, there was no one really pushing him last year. Absolutely. Um, he, not that practice was easy for him, but it was a lot easier for him last year than it is this year because he's being pushed by Marquis Newell. The Absolutely. same thing is, you know, in any sport. You know, mm -hmm. You're better when you get pushed. You're never going to hit your potential if someone's not, like, j nipping at your heels and making your job tougher and making you a better player for it. And that's what they're going to need in the future when – you know, you have Carver Willis. You, you don't want him to rest on his laurels, yep. so to speak. We're going to keep these brief yep. uh, around 10 minutes. We'll probably – we're going to wrap this up right now, not probably. And um, you'll hear from us tackling other positions going forward. Uh, next, we'll probably jump to the defensive side of the ball and discuss perhaps a position in the secondary and see where Kansas State – you know where they're kind of at and talk about a few different discussion points like we did with the offensive line like we talked about perhaps the impact of Carver Willis and what he could have if he's potentially 
ready at some point this season to be a starter on the offensive line. And then what happens at right guard when you're probably going to get a pretty fierce position battle between Ben Adler and Taylor Portier during mm-hmm. fall camp. We'll have those, you know, a couple discussion points on each position group. Up next, you'll probably hear the safeties. They just added, you know, a couple transfers um, in the offseason to that group. So it's going to be an intriguing uh, position to discuss. But for now, for Grand Flanders, I'm Derek Young. You've been listening to the KSO Show on K-State Online YouTube. Always subscribe and always tell your friends. Tell them.